All right, so let's move on to a uh, Honda Odyssey with a PO172. This is a 3.5 liter Honest Odyssey. And we take a look at our codes, and we have a 172 system to rich. Uh, of course, we had to use the uh, pull out the Binford scanomatic here because it's uh, we got to use our best stuff. Um, so we've got this rich code, and we take a look at our fuel trim. Um, for those of you guys that were in our in our rich and lean engine, an EGR flow at idle is going to drive the fuel mixture rich, and that is it's got a speed density fuel system. Um, if we go in and look at Honda's approach to 171, 172, same, same, you know, four steps for both codes. Uh, check the fuel pressure is the first thing on the list. And I don't know about you, but when I open up a diagnosis in, in a service information, and the first thing they tell me to do is to check the fuel pressure, which is like one of the hardest things you could do on a Honda, and they, they want you to do it on a car that's not known for needing fuel pumps, and I think it's got a lifetime service fuel filter on it. You know, it just doesn't give me a warm feeling. You know what I'm saying? But that's the first thing they throw out there. Then they want you to warm the engine up, check the O2 sensor with the scan tool, and if it stays less than 0.3 volts or more than 0.6 volts, then I guess it's good. I'm not sure about that. But if it if it's doesn't not stuck over one under or one over those voltages, then you go to step four. And you apply vacuum to the EGR canister purge valve from the intake side and see if it holds vacuum. Well, that that's the logical step, I guess, to see if uh, we're pulling uh, canister f uh, vapors into the engine. But you know, I got to tell you, I honestly think a canister, uh, a purge solenoid leak is going to give me a whole lot more than 15% plus. But hey, that's the process. And you know, one of the reasons why I think a lot of average techs are avoiding these cars uh, because they just don't they don't understand you know they look at the service information and it just doesn't look right. So the technician follows the steps for the DTC, of course all the tests are good, so the question is what is wrong? And we're gonna take Robert's lead that this is a speed density system and uh, we have to determine if the EGR valve is stuck open. Well, Technician has got the scan tool hooked up. He checked the codes with it. So let's just real quick take a look at our scan data. And we have a PID here called EGR lift, and it says 0%. Now, that kind of is giving me a sinking feeling because 0% uh, EGR is what we want at idle. And our premise is built on the fact that the EGR valve is leaking at idle. Now, the, the rest of the story is we need to look at the VLS PID. And I've been uh, trying to drive this point home tonight. Right now, we have a VLS of 1.6 volts, and the engine is idling, and that is no good. This EGR valve is stuck open. And that's what it's telling us. Notice we have zero lift, but we have 1.6 volts. So what in the world's going on here? Well, the PCM uses a zero point learn for EGR. When you first put, they first put the car together and fire it up, the lowest EGR valve position is learned by the PCM. The problem is when the valve sticks open and you continue to drive the car, okay, the new voltage updates and it becomes 0% lift. So remember we asked the question that uh, a lot of you guys got right, what should the voltage be key on engine off? And that is why you need to know that little factoid, because if it's over 1.2 volts, key on engine off, then you got a stuck valve. It doesn't matter what the lift pit is telling you. It's going to idle rough, and it's going to, uh, the PCM, and the reason it's idling rough, the PCM, um, and we just had a comment come in from Dell. He says if the engine idling rough, or does a computer rich in a mixture to compensate for a vacuum leak? And what happens is the it's not a vacuum leak, Dell. It's actually the EGR is diluting the fuel mixture at, at the same time that the PCM is is adding fuel because the pressure in the intake manifold is incorrect. If the you know these engines run at like 21% vacuum at at idle uh, at sea level anyway, and um, you know uh, when this thing is leaking, the engine vacuum is much lower than that, and the PCM is pumping fuel in, and at the same time we are putting EGR in, bad mixture. 
and we're going to have a rough engine. And we're going to have a PCM that sees a rich O2 sensor and is trying to pull that, that fuel out. 